Joining us now, Ann Walsh, Chief Investment Officer uh, at Guggenheim uh, Partners Investment Management. Um, Scott sat there so many times uh, over the years. Um, that was a shocker uh, for all of us. And we Scott Minard so, yeah, passing away. Our, our regards to the family and uh, husband and everyone else. But great to have you on. Thank you. Uh, I don't know whether the latest inflation number um, informs a, a, the same opinion with you, but uh, when we you know, talked to you previously, that number was not out. So a, a, a bigger than expected drop in PPI. Indeed, yes. Um, it actually adds to our narrative, I think. Uh, so, you know, we, we, as you mentioned, are predicting uh, the recession to start mid-year. And, uh, and it's uh, because we think the Fed is continuing to push on the QT accelerator uh, and continuing to drive down inflation. Uh, as well as labor costs and all the other elements that lead into that story. Um, and uh, uh, we're a little ahead of our market peers in terms of our viewpoint. Uh, our market peers are sort of anticipating a recession maybe at the end of 2023, maybe into 2024. But we think that this uh, quantitative tightening, which is both a combination of rate hikes, which we anticipate the Fed will continue, uh, certainly the market's priced in two 25 basis point rate hikes this year still, and, uh, and uh, of course, the addition of the quantitative tightening coming from the reduction of the balance sheet will also help to drive down prices further. So all this is sort of uh, feeding into our narrative for this year. And the depth of the recession, is it, how's it going to feel? Is it going to feel soft? Is it going to feel hard? Is it going to be short-lived? Is, is the market already discounted the, the, the mild recession? So the market's pricing in a mild recession. And some market participants are still anticipating that we actually avoid recession entirely. Uh, sort of the Goldilocks uh, experience, and but that's not our narrative. We don't think that that's the the uh, place that we end up. And the more quantitative tightening uh, that we see, uh, the more we see uh, uh, the risk of a more prolonged and deeper recession. Historically, recessions last about a year. Uh, if you exclude the pandemic uh, recession and you exclude the global financial crisis, uh, and that's a normal business cycle. And uh, so we could see that. In addition. Uh, we think that the recession, normally, uh, right, where we are right now, we would see the recession being fairly mild, but there's the risk that, particularly with the reduction of the balance sheet and the lack of liquidity that the Fed is uh, uh, introducing, that uh, that recession story is going to is get it worse. justified what the Fed is doing, or do you think they could overshoot? Oh, I think they definitely could overshoot, and I'm, you know, uh, expecting them to. That seems to be their history. And uh, well, that's why, part of the calculus that they overshoot. Indeed, it is. Yes. And uh, and and it's I'm really looking at the quantitative tightening, the balance sheet reduction, which a lot of investors aren't really paying much attention to. And, uh, right. and they're just a quarter point, half point. They're not talking about the, the effects of, of the QT, which is in, sort of in the in the background, but going on. Exactly. Every day, yeah. So what do you do as a result? Do you wait like this is not a time to buy, even though prices have come down so much because you think there's more pain to come? So I think this is a time to reposition portfolios. Uh, as a longtime fixed income manager, uh, there is one thing that Fed has done for us, and they put the income back in fixed income. Yeah. So uh, right now, there's a, a, a very good time to be in investment grade fixed income relative to equities. Um, equities haven't repriced yet. Um, and as we go through a recessionary timeline, we will see that. But certainly right now, uh, the fixed income story is a good one. I would be avoiding uh, the lowest credit quality, high yield uh, and uh, and or bank loans uh, at this point in time, because we haven't seen the default series start. We haven't seen that cycle begin. And as we go through a recession, even a shallow one, defaults will rise uh, and the risks uh, will get much worse in uh, the lower rated credits. Um, where was I going to go next? In terms of the notion that this is some type, type of systemic wage price inflation. Is it? Is that, that's why the Fed is, and we talked about it yesterday, that's why they're so committed, because it, it can be worse than a recession. Obviously, we saw that in the past. But is it, is it just a reopening phenomenon? Is it really actually kind of transitory, even though we can't use that word anymore? Or is it as deep? Is it because of all the money that we printed and spent fiscally and monetarily? What do you think? So there's multiple layers to that question and to the answer. Um, so we, there was the post-COVID reopening, right. and that was the, the jump in prices of goods and the supply chain disruption. And that led the, the Fed to believe that the inflation was transitory. Um, it, has, it has 
pervaded, however, uh, all aspects of the economy, including services and, of course, wages. And now it has become a headwind that the Fed has to fight. What they're really concerned about is, is that if they pivoted too soon uh, or even paused too soon, then what would happen is, is that, uh, uh, that that would allow the reemergence of inflation, and they don't want that to happen.